All right. In this video, I'm going to overview the procedure sections for lab seven. There are three of them. In section A, we'll collect our data using the 20 meter diameter radio telescope at Green Bank Observatory. In section B, we'll use these data to produce the rotation curve of our Milky Way galaxy. And in section C, we'll measure how much mass is enclosed within different distances from the center of our galaxy. In other words, we'll weigh our galaxy. Let's go to section A. Here is a picture of the radio telescope that you'll be using at Green Bank Observatory. We refurbished it with about half a million dollars of Stimulus Act money near the beginning of the Great Recession back in 2010 and have since integrated it into Skynet. Its reflecting surface is 20 meters across. That's about twice the diameter of the world's largest optical telescopes, at least today. It's over six stories tall, weighs over 150 tons, and you'll be moving it around to collect spectra at 12 different locations along the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. How to do that? is described in this tutorial here, after which you have a few reminders. And hopefully you submitted these observations about a week ago, so your data have now come back to you. If so, let's proceed to section B. In this section, you'll use our graphing application with the option set to spectrum and you'll upload each of the spectra that you acquired, plot them, and from the plot, you'll measure the observed wavelength of the most redshifted component. How to do that is described in this tutorial here. And once you've made those measurements, you'll enter them into the table here. Then you'll carry out a number of calculations. First, you'll calculate the speed of the most redshifted region relative to us using the Doppler shift equation. That goes here. You'll calculate our speed along this line of sight, and that goes here. And when you add those two together, you get the total speed of the most redshifted region along the line of sight, which is also its speed orbiting the galaxy. That goes here and you calculate its distance from the center of the galaxy, and that goes here. How to do all of these calculations is explained in the background sections, and there are hints and reminders here. Also, there's a link to a partially formatted spreadsheet that you can use here, and a brief tutorial on how to use it here. Once you've done this, there's an honor code pledge. You'll upload one of your graphs here and you'll show sample calculations here. Once you've done that, you'll return to the graphing website and using the simple curve setting, the curve option, you'll plot the rotation curve. How fast is the Milky Way rotating as a function of the distance from the center of the galaxy. You'll upload that graph here. And then we have two questions for you. Is our galaxy's rotation curve more consistent with being Keplerian or flat? And given that, is our galaxy's mass concentrated at or near the center or spread throughout the disk? Then you'll discuss sources of error here and then proceed to section C. In this section, you're going to take your velocity measurements and your distance measurements from the center of the galaxy. And for each of these, calculate how much mass is enclosed within that distance from the center of the galaxy. How to do this is also explained in the background sections. And your answers will come out in giga 
solar masses. So billions of solar masses. We'll present a sample calculation here. And then we're going to give you two more data points before you plot this. And these data points are the Magellanic Clouds, little galaxies, small baby galaxies that orbit our own larger Milky Way galaxy. They're called the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. And their velocities and their distances from the center of the galaxy are measured using other techniques. And we provide those here. You can then use those values to calculate how much mass is enclosed out to their distances. And that goes here. You'll then return to the graphing website, again, using the simple curve option. And you'll plot enclosed mass as a function of distance from the center. You'll upload that here. And then you'll use that graph to estimate a few numbers. First, you'll estimate how much mass is enclosed within our radius from the center, 8.1 kiloparsecs. Now, in the previous lab, you measured the diameter of our galaxy and came up with a value of about 34 kiloparsecs. That means the radius is about 17 kiloparsecs. So here, use your chart and estimate how much mass is enclosed within the visible light radius of our galaxy, within 17 kiloparsecs. Then use your graph to estimate how much mass is enclosed all the way out to the small Magellanic cloud at 61 kiloparsecs from the center. You can subtract these two to figure out how much mass is between the visible light edge of our galaxy at 17 kiloparsecs and the small Magellanic cloud at 61 kiloparsecs. And that goes here. Then we ask you a couple questions. Is the mass outside the visible part of our galaxy less or more than the mass inside the visible part of our galaxy? That goes here. And then given that the Magellanic clouds have very little mass themselves, is our galaxy composed primarily of visible matter like stars and gas or primarily of dark matter. That goes here. And then in this last box, we want you to research and discuss what the dark matter likely is, specifically in our galaxy. And I'll give you a hint. In our galaxy, dark matter is grouped into two separate categories, machos and wimps. Okay, that's it for this overview video.